Security of the county's network by you know, by our, the state has finished their step to update the or implement their security, which I guess was completed today yesterday, and we'd like to move on to the second step which, I guess, is an on-site security assessment. It's been talked about in the county news and things about it, just to lock down the number of people that can connect to the server and get on the network. And I talked to Steve about this. You still going to have the guest account, correct? Yeah. And so it's just tightening up the recommended uh, IT stuff from ITD. And uh, I'd go ahead and recommend that we approve this and I'd make that a motion. Okay. We have a motion to approve the agreement with Remark to uh, do uh, sort of server, additional server uh, security yeah. features. Um, network security, network ID. security yeah. ID features. Okay. Yeah. And, and for the record, that's how much per month? Yeah. I know. I just we said for the record. Oh, okay. it's, what was it? 125 per month? Yeah. For, yeah. And that's that for the is. server, and then uh, 15 per system per month. And then um, <coughs> on site security assessment was 125 an hour, the bottom one. Yeah. For any thanks, 30 hours for. <coughs> that visit. You got this in your budget, Steve? Yes. Okay. okay, well, if it protects us from Mark Zuckerberg, I second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, additional security to the server. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Just thank you, Steve. Okay. Kristen. Hi. Hi. So I was asked to come and visit with you all on our courthouse being a storm shelter for during the summer months, during the severe weather, tornado, etc. Um, <coughs> I did speak with Roger today, and he, as long as he is here and available, is willing to come up and continue to open the courthouse and stay and monitor if there are individuals here during severe weather or imminent threats. Um, and we started last summer, he, there is a white pickup here um, that he would take home and then be able to bring back so his personal vehicle is not um, in harm's way, so to speak, if there's hail or whatever the weather that may be. Um, however, there are times where Roger is not here. Um, and I would not be able to be here in time for the weather to strike our area, so to speak. Um, so therefore, the question kind of arises is who would come and open and who would be that additional individual? Um, and the question was posed to me, well, if example Candy were to do it, um, she doesn't want her vehicle 
appear her personal vehicle that she's responsible for to be damaged, and I understand that. So she did um, call Bremer Insurance, and they stated that um, whose ever vehicle or person it would be, it would be their insurance and their responsibility, not on the county. There's nothing that the county insurance would cover um, for personal vehicle if there are damages. So my question is, I to you all as a board, how would you like to see it done or handled? Or what are your what thoughts? Ideas you have? You're the you have. Uh, my idea have is... Have you visited with Mr. Mole? No, I have not. Mm -hmm. I have you visited with the city police. Yes, they I have did keys do that. In the courthouse, right? I did do that. The sheriff's office has keys to the courthouse. And I did visit could with Could we get a key to Jim Mole? We, we could, however, the what I when I visited with Steve or <coughs> the police chief now, they stated that they could have someone come and open it, but they couldn't leave them here to monitor. And we can't leave the courthouse unattended with nobody here to be responsible. Okay, we'll have to set up a schedule then. If it's our responsibility as a county to uh, monitor the building when it's open, mm -hmm. so have to have some people on call. Sure. Chris, you're wondering why you couldn't be here though. If you know about bad weather coming, why is that part of your responsibility? It's it is, and it's not something that I couldn't do if I'm here. But coming from Leeds to Devil's Lake, the imminent weather and the threat is generally over by the time I would get back here. But with a lot of our weather systems coming from west to east, chances of you knowing that it's severe weather is heading this way, you should have a, a better heads up than, um, you know, because first it's going to Minot, Rugby, all those communities in between. It's on its way to Devil's Lake. Um, you would think that something would say, you know, maybe I should get in and, and open that because nobody else is around. If that's what you as a board want, um, regardless of the time of day, I will set up a schedule or do something with personal life to, to be here. Pro provided that there was something that was going on with Kristen's life or if the weather was coming from another direction, can we set up secondaries? Yeah. yeah. That's what I yep. said. Uh, uh, I, I think... Call. I think setting up uh, some sort of, of, whether it be a phone bank of people that are willing to do it, um, and whether or not the commission would like to be involved in, in letting employees know that if your personal vehicle gets damaged uh, while on this adventure, that we take care of their personal deductible. You know, if our insurance can't cover it, um, you know, and if it's not their primary responsibility to be up here, well, I'm going to stay home too, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, yeah. And this is not a here or there, but I live downtown, so I would be willing to be a secondary. I mean, Thank you, Lucas. I would too. I've got a county vehicle. Yeah. We, we, if I, you can get my home, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think if we if we work together, we could probably come up with a, a, a group of volunteers, whether it be 5, 10, 15 of us that, hey, Lucas, you mind uh, being on call this weekend? I'm going to be out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that'll work, but I think we have to have that open communication because for 58 years, this building's been a designated follow-up shelter, and people are used to coming up here when there's bad weather around. So... My question would be, are there secondary locations other than the courthouse that are used? Yes. For the desk, right? for the desk, right? for the desk. And that's always open? Um, During imminent weather. Yeah. When they're called, they open. Okay. Because I do believe they have somebody on they're staff. All they 24 staff. Yeah. 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 They have students there. Um, Even when they don't, they still have someone on call all the time mm -hmm. to be able to open that facility. There's no other buildings, is there, Jim? No. Uh, that, at one time, I thought maybe the school, but that, that that's been long gone. The, the college is a father shelter. Did they, they not open that? Before? They do that for their students this time, but we haven't designated it as a, a public shelter. Has, has there been a conversation with them? I mean, this is again separate. No, from not to, not since I've been involved. Not, in it, no. not for me either. Just that just might be a, that might be a worthwhile conversation, just as a separate issue. 
right now the biggest shelters that we count on and all the resorts are familiar with is the courthouse and the desk floor. That's what we've pushed through the community. Can, generally speaking, how long a period is it? A couple hours? A couple hours tops, yeah. It, you know, by the time we know it and we're watching the weather throughout the day and it comes, you know, the, when the sirens go off, you want the people already in safety. You know, hopefully they're paying attention to us. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, two hours is probably all it is. But they are really, I, I mean, I think that one time there was about, what, 60 people up here, you said? No. Or? There are probably 20, though. Okay. 20, yeah. probably the most we've ever had? And probably around the most. Well, we had some people come up here, and it was at one time, it wasn't a bit, you couldn't get in and stuff. Whatever. Which we absolutely don't want to have happen because no. you wouldn't want somebody to count on the county courthouse to be and then a shelter. And, then so. and I think it's our goal to work together as agencies to make sure, you know, uh, as the fire department, we're out spotting the weather, trying to keep an eye on where it's at and with law enforcement agencies. So it's hard for us to get up here and then when it, something does happen, all our hands are on deck trying to mm -hmm. do the, dig through the mess. Where would you suggest we have a key then with the city police and the sheriff? I think the city police, if they would be willing to open the door so that the door is unlocked and they can access and then someone is on their way up to supervise or whatever, have a, 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 the conference room or whatever, relatively you know, mm -hmm. secured anyhow. So. Yeah. And they do have a key. They do have access to the city police department as well as the sheriff's department. They all carry files. So that it might be easiest if we're going to recruit a kind of a list of secondaries to just do so within the courthouse first. Right, and see if we can't get a reasonable number of people to yeah. be. Yeah, that's definitely worth a shot to try that again. It has been done in the past, but absolutely to revisit it. I think secondary is almost as if it's going to necessarily be a difficulty, but I think we just have to have the coordination so that, you know, if you have a secondary tree, basically, somebody has to coordinate calling down the tree to make sure we find somebody that's going to do it or make sure we have dates lined up mm -hmm. or whatever. And I, I think that would fall under you, basically, just look sure. at it and go, okay, Roger can be here, 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 here. Okay, here's the days we need somebody else, and then go mm -hmm. down the tree and see who can fill in. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a reasonable, a reasonable approach to it. I, I mean, I think the discussion that at least my understanding of like, when this was brought up was just basically so we can coordinate to make sure before we start advertising, this is going to be a place you can come or that <laughs> we have reductions are right. You know, yes. you want to make, sure that <coughs> make sure that the door is going to be open if people need to get right. in. Yeah. So, yes. and the doors do get open when it's a severe when it's a warning. That's when the doors are open. Yeah, because it's imminent. Yeah. With tornado warning or severe thunderstorm warning, with watches they're not open. That's how it's been operated. It doesn't have to say that way, but that's how it's. I, I think that's the way to key it with the, you know how you open it. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you can't. You know, some weather shows up unexpectedly. Anyway. It's going to happen. We're, we're going to miss something at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, you got some people at the, uh, at the shop. They the don't have bobs, but yeah, I'm sure they. They'd be interested. Yeah, they probably would. Just to monitor. Huh? Oh yeah. I mean yeah, that's that's all I think we're looking for is for people to be here during severe weather. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well if you know if Kristen had that list and created that list that you know spans the severe summer weather mm -hmm. you know time period and then you know the, the more the merrier because oh gosh I can't go out of town because I I have to open the courthouse in case there's bad weather. We don't want to have have that instance, but there's a lot of people that stick around too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, well, and then, you know, if you're gone for training, or you're gone for training, or, you know, training does happen, we go out of town uh, during the week. So, unfortunately, these damn things never show up at 3 o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon. You know, it's inconvenient that they don't schedule things with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> talk, talk to that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, with something like that, we're Kristen, Jim, Star, all the communications, you know, if we better communicated that and, and maybe let Star know, give her a, a master list. And so if it's, you know, severe weather is coming, either she can send out a, a notice to that individual or, mm -hmm. or, you know, or if it's not open, sure. she knows who to hear to hear them mm -hmm. too. Yeah. You know. Well, the city police come and open the door. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah. no. I was going to say, do we, want, yeah, do, do, right. do, we, do we want to put that no, on you or not? You're busy, you're busy enough the way it is, and 
But they could that. be added to like the page out for the fire department when you severe weather coming. Their phone number could be in there, and then they know that we're getting weather and that. that and if and if they knew they were on the that this was their week, they could right? Key, that, yeah. 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 I mean, so it could be a bank of lists. Yes. That wouldn't be a problem. Because then I would leave it. I would I would give everybody who's on the list a copy of the list, so that oh my gosh, I was on this weekend for whatever reason. I had a family emergency, and I'm in Minneapolis. Yeah. Right, so. that I can call that now it's on me because I agreed to be on that week. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a workable solution. I think it just takes some communication. Yeah, it's just going to take a little bit of coordination on setting the list up, basically, and then, and then developing uh, yeah. you know, the ability for people to be. And it shouldn't add a lot of work to any of us. No, right. it's just no, a matter of putting it together. Our emergency manager can coordinate all this. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, let's get it handled then. Good. good. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Kevin. All right. I added quite a few items to my list, so I'll try and burn through these. Okay. Uh, I talked to Mike Gilbert, so that they are roofing about the roof on the Heritage Center. And he, was, he went up there, but it was raining on the far side. Day. But it did give us a good opportunity to look at that pipe. And it's not actually the pipe that's busted, it's leaking right where the pipe hooks up to the, so. It's not but, sealed right, is that right? Yeah. Right. So he's at least aware of that anyway. And he couldn't get up there to look at it, so he was going to come back at a different day and give him an estimate. And he, he didn't think it was too big a deal, or, or what, you're not sure? Yeah, he didn't want to commit until he looked at it. What, what his comment was, if it's not a big deal, I'll probably just go up there and fix it and not say anybody but Bill, but if it's going to be a couple day job, then I'll have to give you some kind of an estimate. Okay. He's going to go up there and uh, hurry up my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of left it up to the girls to uh, work with him. Uh, sh is it Shelly? Kelly? Kelly's Kelly. Kelly's on. He's on? Okay. Yeah, she's the president of the Heritage Center Board, so. Okay. And her helper, I can't think of her. Yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie, yeah, who works in her office, yeah. Those two girls were going to work with me. And we just we just had a Heritage Center Board meeting, and they they reported that to the board, uh, that you guys have been there, and that's how they knew that it was a seal issue. Um, and if we can get that fixed, and it's not a big issue, even if we need to pay Mike for his time to fix that, the Heritage Center has the resources to do that. If it was going to be something where it was a, a full roof replacement, that's where when last I was here I talked about a grant plus, you know, it might be more and if the county might be willing, then that's sort of a separate conversation. But again, if it's not a big deal, let's just get what's done, what needs to be done to take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for doing that, Kevin. Yes. Thank you. And then the uh, contract for the bar paving project this summer with Strata is here now, so. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second to sign the contract to Strata for the paving project. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor vote by saying aye. 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 Both at the same time. Motion carries. Uh, Mag Water, we're getting ready to put that down again this year. Uh, just curious if we want to pay for 75% of the county roads again this year. That's what we've done in the past? Yep. I'm going to approve the past. Okay. We have a motion to approve 75% cost share. Second. For the second. I may want a further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 I, did, I did get a little note. Basically, everybody on that road, all but one, said no. So, on, on 14th Street. Okay. So, I just wanted you to know that everybody, all but one, they don't want it. One doesn't want. One doesn't oh, want. Every, for oh, it. so everybody else. Is Everybody's on board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. That one was on a county road, so maybe we should have a separate motion. Oh, okay. Deal with that township road. I, I move that we uh, go ahead and help with the May water on 14. Okay. We have a motion. 14th Street. Okay. Is that what it is? 14th Street. Yeah, it's street or yeah, it's street. It's on Avenue. Okay. okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Further discussion? Is the one going to pay a share of them or whatever it is? Well, they'll just divide it up along the rest of them. That's what they did before. Yeah, There's think, always one. Yeah, I think it was kind of the opinion last year that we this would be the last year we would kind of look at doing that simply because of the bypass thing of the, so the underpasses going and stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. 
seeing no further discussion, all in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> and next item, I did go ahead and get some prices for rent, uh, rent an excavator. Uh, Doosan or Bobcat was $4,500 and cat with, Caterpillar was 50 per month and Caterpillar was $5,300 per month. Is it similar equipment? Yeah, same weight, same horsepowers and everything. So you don't have an opinion either way? We used that Doosan last year and the guys actually liked it. Hmm. Yeah. We we'll just take a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And then also a trench packer, we got to rent one of those for $2,200 a month. Is that also for my iron Yep. Okay. Yep. Move to amend my motion to include the bill for Okay. Thank you. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the bids from Ironhide to uh, rent the excavator and trench pack for several projects. Further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And to go along with that bridge replacement, the, um, I got a verbal quote from Wanzik to rent a crane. It's going to be around $20,000. Um, he was going to give me a firm quote, so don't need any action on that right now, but that's going to be within my budget of replacing that bridge. And also I have to uh, build some kind of scaffold underneath there, and I was pricing out two by tens today for scaffolding to stand on while they bolt it together. Is that the Morrison Township one? Or? Yes. Yeah. That's where the trains go on and the scaffold. And, uh, the two by tens are going to, if I buy them in town, they're $2,200. And if we go to Menards, they're $1,400, which is a third less. So just wanted to ask you guys how you felt about that. What's the total cost of the project? Like for all of the materials? In My budget is 180 So with this... Uh, Crane at 20, I figured 30 for the crane, so we're left, we're under budget there. And we got we got to run. I got to run a boat. Don't know what that's going to cost yet. You know, just some simple boat to move back and forth. Nothing fancy, no motor, or nothing. And I have to get some welding done for to hold the scaffolding up. But specifically for the scaffolding, do you have a sense for the total cost of that? Is? Yeah, it's going to be probably. About three or four thousand. So expensive, but it's a big bridge. Right. So thirty percent of that is actually a fair amount. I thought maybe if we were going to tell me five hundred, it probably wouldn't. Thirty percent would be a big difference. But you also got to go to Menards, get it. Yeah. But if we were sure. for, yeah. for even like this fourteen hundred, that tell you the price for eight hundred dollars, so it'll be worth the trip there back. A track hole going to be up there too? You're going to have that nope, up there? No, the track will be in town here. Yeah. You won't have it up there? Oh, it'll be up. I mean, at the bridge? Yeah, yeah. it'll be out to tear the old bridge out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we ask yeah, a silly question? Probably. Can we get a, uh, like a forklift and put a scaffold on that? Can we get it where we want it? I thought about that and it's. The angles of the ground that goes, it would have to sit down below, and the, and the angles are going to be too steep. And then, even if we did get it under there, it only covers like an eight, eight or ten foot wide area, and that's an eighty foot long bridge, so it's going to be way out to the center. But I'd say, in, in my opinion, well, if you could get a good base, you could get like a forty foot telehand, you know, like a forty foot boom lift, and then push it out to the side, you'd be able to get out to the middle. But it's all about getting a quality base and right. thinking of what that looks like. I don't think you're gonna. I want to run two point. crews, one crew on each end, so yeah. that'd be two telehandlers. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to get a good solid base underneath. Them. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little steep down through there. It is really steep. I mean, it's a pretty you good. Figure out just hanging the scaffold. Yep, yeah, yeah, off, off the old, off, hanging the scaffold and off the old. Piers and headwalls. That looks doable. Yeah, it does. We're, we've talked many hours about it at the shop about how to do it. <laughs> all four of us keep racking our brains. I gotta get a hold of Valerie. Get his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's right there. Well, Zach, all they're gonna do is bring the crane. Yep, they'll have two ground men. 
you know, riggers. I didn't want to do any of the rigging, so I asked for an extra ground man, but that's part of the cost. So they'll have the crane, an operator for that crane, and then two ground men. Well, that's right. They provide the operator and the whole works, so that's a pretty good deal, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's plenty of money. It was ten thousand, five thousand dollars more beer, and five thousand dollars more back. So that's half the price right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Do they have these scaffolds? Want that? Do they? You know, I called and they they can hang from the bridge itself, but our bridge won't be there. I mean, where we need it. So the only option is to basically build, build some kind of scaffold. Well, if it's thirty percent cheaper to go to Grand Forks, I'd say I'm in favor of going to Grand Forks to do it. Some of the, I'm just trying to think back to the presentation that they gave us. Some of the other companies that have, have done bridges like this, like Botten or something, have they they have, have they done anything with this kind of span where maybe they would have something? No, nothing that's big. And they, like just they have an scout around here. Yeah, they talked to Wanzek and Swingin', and the only kind they have is you know like the three foot stuff that you buy for putting a wall up there. You know. Or else the stuff that hangs from the beams itself. And we don't have any options. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think. We got to rent something out there. It'd be worthwhile to buy it, some kind of scaffolding, other than this lumber and braces. It's going to be safe, though. Yeah, we talked about it. Make sure it works right because it's yeah. first go around. I want to yield. Exactly. I'm going to buy life jackets. I think there's only three feet of water there, but they're going to wear life jackets so they don't drown in three feet of water. I mean, I got all these little expenses that are going to come up that I don't know if I should wait for motions to buy or how to handle those. Or or can we can we make a motion to allow Kevin with respect to this project to cover costs of less than well everything well, well, the budget? What's, what's our well, what's our what's our number? It's a thousand, I guess a thousand. But but as far as but as far as um, this particular thing with respect to lumber, if you think it's gonna handle it, then I would make the motion that you go with Grand Forks because of how much cheaper it is. Okay. I do think it will. We have a motion to allow Kevin to go buy some lumber in Grand Forks. Do we have a second? For the purpose of discussion, I'll second it. Okay, we have um, a second. I'll allow you to discuss it. it it's it's kind of half a dozen one way or another. I mean, we're saving eight hundred dollars, but we're going out of town to do it. When there's somebody within our community that perfectly capable of having that. I agree that. And those people pay taxes. And those people pay taxes. And they vote. Uh, well, apart from the last one, I, I, I agree with you. I just I just think that it's one of those things where if it was some other amount, thirty percent, you know, we'd be having a different conversation if it was a hundred thousand dollars and a thirty percent difference. Exactly, you know, but it's uh, twenty-two hundred dollars and a thirty percent difference. Well, if that if that's true, I mean, if we're if we're talking about you know, apart from sort of the, the philosophical stand that I'm taking right. about that, I don't have a problem either way, right? I mean, either one's going to be well within your budget. You know, it's not going to cause any issues. But I also don't know that I think that within reason that, that a, a, a county governance or any form of governance should play matchmaker with respect to a capitalist society. Yeah. But we've had this discussion a few times in the yeah. last three years. That's why I always bring it up. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't really have a good solid uh, precedent. precedent basically off of, you know, we always just kind of, if it's close, we stay in town and, and we don't really ever quantify what <laughs> close is. <laughs> And then I don't really have a strong feeling either way, but 30% is 30%. Right. I mean, I wouldn't be a very good financial advisor if I didn't know what the value of a percent is. Okay. Further discussion? Okay. I'm trying to come up with an idea that we don't need to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, what, when are we? When are we talking about? It's going to be July still, right? Uh, July sixteenth. Yes. Okay, so we still have a little bit of time. Yep. Somebody that does this, I mean, just yeah. Can you get you guys business? to go to the gym and jump higher? <laughs> <laughs> How far are you going to be off the ground? Twenty feet. Last we were there this yes. winter. No, not twenty. Um, eight before you get to the water, and then I'm guessing three feet of water. I don't know how much water is there. Yeah, hot day of water would be all right. So if you fell off, no <laughs> water's in the rock. So ah, oh, there gotta be somebody around that does it. I mean, well, well it, instead of why don't we? Feel the motion and then table this until the next. Well, that that's our next. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. We've got a little bit of time to get yeah. this done, right? Well, it will take a couple weeks to get the lumber ordered. Nobody's got that much lumber. But if we if we did it the third of June or whatever our first meeting in June is, um, we'd give you a, a month to oh, yeah. get it over ordered and yeah, get it. Yeah, we'd give you a couple weeks to look at some. Hopefully, maybe yeah. try to find another option that would work. Yeah, yeah, I spent most of the day today, but <laughs> I keep looking. Hey, we could rack our brain, too. Yeah, yeah that would help. Yeah. Maybe you guys come up with ideas that I don't think of, so. Yeah. Maybe Paul knows something. I didn't contact him. But. Okay. Is that okay with the maker of the motion that we. Yeah, I'm happy. Like, honestly, I'm not I'm not so tied to this. No, I no, but, no but, but we, we allow a little extra time to, to, yeah, to try to think about maybe another option. Because I'm just of the opinion that we're talking about. What's the total pricing? 2200 Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good amount of effort. I mean, if we could find something we could rent and then, you know, not, you know, because what are we going to do with the lumber? I'm sure we can find something to do with it. No, I will withdraw the motion. Okay, the motion has been withdrawn. That's okay with the that's second. Okay, um, then since it's on the agenda, uh, should we can we uh, I'd entertain a motion that we table that and allow Kevin to continue to work on it. Second. We have a motion and a second to table. Uh, At least the lumber. How we're going to, yeah, the, the purchase of lumber on how we're going to do the uh, scaffolding to look at some other options. Further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, right. same sign. Motion carries. So then at the next meeting, I think the crane is pretty well lined up, but we need to pin down the price and all. So I'll have that at the next meeting, too. Okay. They don't have any ideas, huh? Why is that? Not for our situation. I mean, like I said, they got the regular, a lot of times they pump all the water out when they're doing one. So they get to work a little bit to dry so they can set that regular scaffold wherever they want it. We don't have the working in the water, which is not a lot of water, but let's name that other one in Fargo, swing it? Swing it. Well they have the ones that hang, but they like I said they hook to the high beams and we don't have that luxury either. They call Bono and call me and see what. Yeah, they, they worked in the dry on theirs. They did work in the dry. Yeah. Okay. Same way with. Uh, well, come July, this thing might be dry too. Ideal. Joke. I say, don't be cursing <laughs> the rain on Thursday, you know. Come on. Maybe it's not a joke, but it may be a reality. I don't know what you're saying. She's a gunpowder out there today. Do you have anything else, Kevin? I do. Oh, yeah, let's, let's move on. Uh, uh, North Dakota LTAP has uh, taken a couple of van loads of people to Malacca, Minnesota to look at a test track where they, every 50 feet, 500 feet, they'll put down chips in one spot and do something else. And anyway, that's going to be on the 22nd of this month. And it's a $50 registration fee and $93 for one night at a hotel, but it's out of state travel. And I'd like to go. It's a week from the day. So I need permission to do out of state Move travel. Move Move that back. Back. <clears throat> Mark, sorry. Okay, we have a motion and a second to allow out of state travel for Kevin. If you go, don't take your fishing pole because Malax Lake is a yeah. catch and release only. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, further, uh, oh, we're not, no, we haven't, we haven't been uh, forward yet. Okay. All 
Opposed in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And the last one I have is uh, Brent is uh, wanting a new software system to run our highway maintenance program. And the one we're looking at now, we did actually did a lot of studying for this one. It's uh, probably a month of digging into this, but to get the software, it's gonna and what he wants is gonna be eleven thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, and they gave us the option of paying for half of it this year and half of it next year. I do have the fifty-seven twenty-five in the budget. So that works. They don't charge interest or anything if you pay it over two years? No, not in this case. You want a motion on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah does that include everything? You don't need to upgrade your computer for it? No, nope, it'll go right on our computer, but no part of their support is all included in that? Support it in two days of uh, training and support for six months, which just about gets us to the end of the year. Yeah. And do you feel that it's going to be a significant improvement? I do. We, we have needed this for probably okay. six years now. It's sad to say, but it's been about six years. Yep. Okay, then I'll second the motion. Okay. We have a motion to second to uh, purchase the software. Further discussion? Is there any annual maintenance on that? There is. That'll be $1,500 starting okay. next year. Okay. Every year will be $1,500. What are you paying for the software? We don't have any. It's, we've been using uh, spreadsheets. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, you know, really that. that's not bad for an eleven thousand dollars software. No, and yeah. I think that's reasonable. Uh, it's plenty of money. And then our thought was we'd do the uh, fifteen hundred dollars for three years, and if we don't have any problems with it, then we might do it by the hour. Sure. The discussion. Uh, seeing none, I'll have to uh, roll call it. Since we're spending some money. Fred? Aye. Olson? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Lycon? Aye. Motion carries when the software can be purchased. And that's all you got, Kevin? Yeah. Do you have anything you want to bring? No. no, that's all I have. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. New business. Uh, through Light Region Law Enforcement Center building. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the billing, uh, and that's including the Ranchery Center, correct? The 96,309 and then uh, $4,940 for the re entry. Okay. Motion and a second to approve both of those. Then. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call it, please. Olson? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Fred? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I need to turn down the AC in there. I think that's problems too. <laughs> Approve the list of bills for the highway department. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bills for the highway department. Further discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Olson? Aye. Fred? Aye. Lifeline. Aye. Motion carries. I should mention with those list of bills now we have all of our remaining three percent of the FEMA money paid out to all the townships, so we're done with FEMA for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're the year? Year? We're for we yeah, until we have a new disaster. Yeah, well, well, until we don't have a disaster. I'm gonna close that one. I think we're out of one, right? change billing, which is for election envelopes. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bill for election envelopes to see change. Uh, for the discussion. Roll call, please. Brown? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Olson? Aye. Fred? Aye. Lifon? Aye. Motion theories. Uh, approval of the bill for the uh, O&M on the West Dyke. Uh, quarterly billing, which is $17,653.94. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Just as a, a question of clarification, I'm sure we've approved one of these before. Is this in line with what it usually is? Okay. 
Yeah, it's like, you know, it's pretty, pretty consistent. And the salvage from the news last week, wasn't it, Eric, that uh, wasn't there a bill in the part of the yeah. bill that's going to be, Corey's going to take care of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometime in the future, it's possibly. Possible. Hopefully, hopefully possible. Yeah, the the core is going to take care of this? Yeah. Uh, possibly. All of it? By just certain bumps. Yeah. Or bumps, huh? Yeah. No? No. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. Senator, I can't put an amendment into a bill to try to get the quarter paid for it. So, no. yeah. for the ongoing upkeep for me. Let's hope she passes. Yeah. yeah. It would be helpful. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve paying that. Include the discussion. Seeing none, we'll call again, please. Chris? Aye. Olson? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Blackmon? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Ramsey County Housing Authority Board Appointments. And we have... Move to approve both. Two. Yes. Sorry. Ram Delvick, or Ram Delvick. Yep, and he's off. And uh, Angie Holtz is now going to take this spot. And then Renee is going to be reappointed. Reappointed. Okay, we have a motion, and did you second, Mark? Yes. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the two board appointments for the RCHA for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Full same sign. Motion carries. Uh, approval of site authorizations. Excuse me. We have three of them. Baseball boosters, Devil's Lake Youth Activities. Blue Blue. <coughs> Sorry, Kate. Okay. Yeah. Good motion and a second for the One is for Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. And the approval of a raffle permit. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the raffle permit for the sportsman's court. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Move this one up. Fantastic. <laughs> approval of the homestead credits. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the homestead credits. Further discussion on that. Looks like it's good. All in favor, vote by of the motion, vote by saying aye. Aye. For the same sign. Motion carries. Homestead credit is approved. Uh, transfer of the beer and liquor license, and I believe that is on your desk. I'd like to point out that the Ramsey County Housing Authority Board of Appointments address is Florida. And if you recall on the one that we had for a transfer for Ed's, we asked that that be tabled until that individual had an Arcota residence. And, and to clarify, it's the, it's the owner of the license that needs to be a resident of the state of North Dakota and not the person managing it, just to make sure I'm on the right side of this. Because the person managing it is in Alexander, North Dakota. And you'll note that on 914. So here's, um, so here's the name of all officers, directors, and individuals holding 1% capital stock in Florida. But the control of the establishment for which the license is required is Alexander North Dakota. So if, if, if it is true that that the uh, the owner needs to be a resident of North Dakota, then I would agree. But if just to clarify, if it's not the controller of the entity. Well, is this binding then? No, no. Yeah, this is binding. They got sold, right? Yes. 86.50, how we used? I was looking at it as well, and I, I, I think I agree with, with Lucas in saying, if, if number 14 states give names and addresses of all partners, silent or otherwise, so partnership would imply mm -hmm. ownership of the operation as well. It's just the other person is who owns at least 1% of it. Yeah, right. and by the last name, it appears as though they were, probably they have the same last name, so they're either related or husband and wife or something of that nature. Well, they had notarized out in Kansas County. Um, they have one of RV and one of Fargo, I heard that. Okay. Uh, convenience store. 
So do we want to act on that tonight, or do we want to table it, make sure that they're North Dakota residents, or you don't have any further information on that, do you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any problem with seeing clarification. Like, we don't want to break century code. I think they will. I think they're in charge of it now. They were doing inventory yesterday. I know that. Can we can we approve it on the contingency that because uh, because the, the person that applied I think <coughs> actually at the, at the very back the person that signed for it Adam is is Bonnie. Yeah. So so then that that does raise the concern yeah. that Jeff has. And is that how we worded that one with, with Ed's originally, that first one was on the contingency that they became North Dakota citizens? That's right, yeah. Um, so we, we, we approved it on the contingency that before the license went into effect, they were a North Dakota right. resident. I'm trying to recall why. Is that stated that they have to be a North Dakota that's, resident? That's right. that's if they're not a corporation. Correct. Because if they're a corporation, they can be anywhere. Right, but I, but I remember that that was, that was an issue that had to do with residency in North Dakota. Yeah, but I don't remember if it was the owner or the controller was, was my... Yeah, I mean, my, my only concern is is that if, if they're looking to handle for keys, essentially, and we don't approve it, then they technically can't be open or they'll... Yeah, yeah, we don't want to put them it's in the lurch there. It's but the trash. Yeah, so I'll approve them with, with yeah. the contingency that making sure that. Yeah, as long as, yeah. well, let's run it by Carrie, right? And if, as long as Carrie's cool with it, then it's approved. Why don't yeah. we just approve with the contingency? Okay. And I, I think that's a reasonable way to, until we get more information. We'll we'll make a motion so, yeah, yeah I, I, would make, I would make the motion uh, that we approve the transfer provided that it carry, and you know, the state's attorney has no. Uh, issues with respect to Century Code. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the transfer as stated in the motion. <laughs> Further discussion? <laughs> yeah, rather water. I don't think we need a license for that. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion, vote by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Visitors and delegations. I was just asked to be here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, for the for the for the. Uh... Well, no, Chief had a conversation with Ed today, and I guess yeah, if, oh, you, oh, if you were gonna, yeah. if you had any oh, questions, yeah, I, that's what I figured you were here for. Yeah, if there was any, I said we talked about it. Okay. If there was any questions, I could help with or whatever. So. Okay. Yeah, you told me some instances in the last few days. I guess they were kind of scary. Um, I don't know what to say, I guess. I know lots of people are trying to burn that deal and burn crop residue. And yeah. That's that, that big burn that happened yeah. in the field north of town. You would think they'd have it all done by now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, was that was that a legal burn? The one north of town where the police all showed up? Does so anybody know that answer? No. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't know your office, so. No, north of town. That was right by... Uh, Strong cell out here? Yeah, on the other side of it. Yeah, in between that and uh, what's the implement dealer up there? Yeah. The old um, ones. The precision egg building. Yeah, precision egg building. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was right, right does, there. It was a big burn. Does, does what do you think County still have their green band on? I know they put I one. believe so. Okay. Nelson, Nelson put one on. Well, then it the, was all over the news, right? The state was. Yeah. Well, we had a red flag warning. Uh, well, and then, yeah, and this is where we come back into the situation where a, a burn ban is in effect from the state whenever they say it's in effect, essentially, correct? I can always forget the legalities of it because technically we don't have to approve a burn ban for a burn ban to be in place once the state says there's, My burn, there's a burn ban. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and in your opinion, Lee, would you recommend? Right now, I would. Okay. Um, um, good. I guess what, well, to give the background, I guess Ed had this afternoon. Um, ended up out at Penn there, southwest of Penn, where it ends up nothing but cattails and goose crap or whatever you want to call it. Um, hired man, like communications got crossed. Hired man ended up on the wrong side of the east-west road and lit some stuff that he shouldn't have. 
We got called out six o'clock Saturday night. We left scene at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Knowing it wasn't out, but by the time we got there and had a plan formulated, it was dark. All these bad things can happen in the dark when you don't know the way to land anymore. You know, I mean, it's been underwater out there for 25 years. Uh, figuring we would have to go back. We didn't figure we'd have to go back at 4 o'clock in the morning. So we got there when the light was coming up and so we could evaluate to do, you know. There's roads out there. We had one truck. That's the only truck we would go down. You know, those roads would just come out of the water. Yeah. Um, and we got one truck. I don't want to say that's you could sacrifice, but it's an old Humvee. The thing is built to do what we did with it. Um, but if we didn't stop it on the east side, you know, it was two miles to the county road south of Penn, and there's still active farms in there. And to the west and to the north, um, you know, there's people out, if you want to call them a cabin or, you know, whatever. Um, so we spent the next ten and a half hours back burning and trying to get the thing to where we thought everything was protected. And we went back out at six o'clock that or nine o'clock Sunday night and spent two hours out there just making sure we had what we had. Um, it's probably the biggest burn we've had in our district. I mean we've been on bigger burns you know, on the reservation or help Lakota or whatever, but this is probably the biggest one we've had in a long time. It's over probably 1,200 acres easy. Um, you know, we had two miles. We had two miles of fire line at one point. Um, and I guess what brought it to the forefront was the land operator felt, I think, pretty bad about it made the comment to the landowner that maybe they should make a donation to the fire department. The landowner stated, well, I pay taxes, I'm not going to. And he's completely right. Okay, I'm not here to, somebody had a bad day, but it got us to thinking, so we went back to the hall um, and figured the fire backwards, if you want to call it that. We have a chart you know, per truck with two guys per hour. And that's based, you know, we need that for mutual aid or we have a contract with Camp Grafton. Um, the truck cost on that fire for the 18 and a half hours we were out there was $24,500. For the extra manpower. So that's we had, one truck? No, that was, that was, However many trucks we had at each time we were out there. One time we had three trucks, one time we had four trucks, one time we had one truck. And one extra guy each time we were out there, and the total cost of that was $25,200 or something. So I was in Candace's office on Candace, right? Candy. Uh, asked her what, just for the sake of argument or the sake of having information, Granted, Pelican Township's a small township to start with, and now half of it's underwater, but their 2017 five mills to the fire department was $1,080. They've been a member of the fire district since 2006. Assuming that that $1,000 was paid every year, that's $22,000. So, yes, he was right. He paid taxes. And I'm not saying where I'm looking to cover, make money, but I'm just trying to put... Yeah, it's just a perspective. It's a perspective of, are you being extra, are you doing, are you doing your due diligence to, to get your land back because, hey, I'm all for, all, all for that, okay? But, you know, if the fire department does a prescribed burn or control burn, the winds have to be under 10 miles an hour. You have to take into consideration which way the winds are going. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of things as a fire department we have to do that make a lot of sense for the average person. Yesterday afternoon, 4 o'clock, phones went off. We went east of town. Individual burning his field off. They had it disked. However, the winds were too heavy. Jumped the fire break. Jumped the road. 
went into Ackerman Acres and burnt past an individual's property. I was setting up a tanker to support the brush units. A relative of this individual pulled up and chewed my ass because we were out there putting the fire out. They started the fire, they called us, and I got my ass chewed. This is when being a volunteer and being worried about the reputation of the fire department caused some internal conflict with the demons in my soul. Because <laughs> I should have jerked him out of the car and bitch slapped him until my hand was sore. But I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's, we don't want to stop burning. We really don't. Because we understand, I mean, 70% of the guys on our fire department are ag-related and either they're in it or they're in a business related to it. But some of these guys, you know, if they're along the highway and somebody passes by that come from Wisconsin where you don't get to burn and they see a flame 30 feet high in the railroad ditch and they call and we go, but it was a controlled burn and it was in the black and there's really nothing they can do about it, but that individual didn't have five minutes to call the LEC and say, I'm here. Not only do they not do that, but they'll sit there and say, well, I've got 10 more going from here to Penn. <laughs> well, you're obviously not watching any of them. And I've been in situations where I was there, did everything I thought was possible, and still had to call for help because the wind switched that I wasn't ready for, or I missed something. And if you're not sitting there and you're 10 miles away, now somebody else has a problem. And we're just trying to get, we don't know how to get the information out there in a pleasant, you know, manner. We're just looking, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean. I mean, the, la the last thing any of us want to do is wake up Pull up CNN and see the headline, Ramsey County engulfed in flames, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's, that's... You know, and, and, the, and the other thing is, if it is a controlled burn on the west side of the county, and we're concentrating on the west side of the county, and Ed has a problem on the east side of the county, and it's actually a problem, our response time from town to his place is what it is, but our response time from the other side of the county to Ed's becomes an issue. Yeah. Well, from town, it, it can be an issue. Yeah. And, well, that's, and that's what our concern is, really, is, is we're wasting resources sometimes chasing things that we don't need to because they are in the black. They are being monitored. They are... Guys ask me, you know, do I have to call this in? And, I, and my answer is, are you within a mile of the highway? Because that's where our biggest problems are. Yeah. Now, yesterday afternoon, well, he was within a mile of the highway, but he was also, you don't have to start on the windward side. You can start upwind and let that thing burn slow across, and you actually get a better burn there. But if you start on the upwind side and let it burn, you create more safe zone than the 60-foot disc area. And that wind, you know, embers can go a long way. And that's what, you know, it just, the wind was just right on a hill and it jumped the road. Well, car leaves. Car yeah. Leaves right on this you know, and that's, we're just trying to get some awareness. You know, I, uh, you know, like I said, I don't want to. Maybe we can get some help from the media. Yeah. Think, well, and, I think and I'm always more than welcome that. Yeah. You know, they always help us. So <laughs> I think we should let the word out and try to do that. Lee, I wanted to ask you a question on that one out in Pelican. Was, was it mostly lake bottom then and cattail burning? Maybe farmable land, was it? Eventually, <laughs> maybe? There's a lot of CRP there. Okay. And there's a lot of potholes there. Okay. So, um, at some point, you know, another four feet, yeah, you know, there's going to have to be some road repair out there, and you're not going to get there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Probably 80% of what burnt off had wildlife easement on it. You know, conservation, you know, 
and I don't know if they haven't found out yet or they're just going to let that one slide, but somebody's going to have to answer something, you know. And we couldn't fight it. We had the back burn to stop it. I mean, we stopped, you know, when I got to where we, we knew we were safe. But the only way to fight that is to start put fire on the ground. Once we put fire on the ground, we're just as liable as the guy who accidentally started it. And if it's in wildlife easements, technically there's supposed to be phone calls made, but when you're staring at something across, <laughs> you know, half a mile away and it's the flames are 40 feet in the air, you're not really worried about making phone calls at that point, unless it's to get more help. Recommending to burn down that? I, you know, like Adam said, we got the state kind of looking over us too, you know, they put that burn bands on like a day. Which is a good idea. Yeah, I'm not arguing. Well, there. there was smoke in the air today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, still fire going on. But you know, I mean, and it was on the radio. I mean, every time the news come on, Eric was saying something about his red flag day, and you can't. I can't imagine nobody was not in the radio when the news well, was on at some that point. Red, today. red flag um, warning. Does that indicate no burning? Is that a statewide burning ban? It's not a ban. Mm -hmm. It's a don't be recommendation. It's a, right. it's a really strong recommendation that but, you keep the match in your But pocket. if we put a burn ban on, then it's penalties involved, right? You know, we, we have some of the lowest recorded dew points in, you know, modern yeah, history. You know, you know, Saturday when that thing started, dew point was 24%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could exhale and get flame to go 40 feet at 24% humidity. Um, we got to be hoping um, for some rain on Thursday is what it comes down to. Well, and, and, and if there's rain on Thursday and it, it's, it's still a substantial thing, you know, most of this goes away. Yeah. That's what I got to hope. But the thing we were thankful for that this big fire was on a weekend and yeah, almost no, no. everybody, well, everybody that was there wasn't working. Right. If it would have been a Wednesday, Thursday affair, now you've got nine guys you know, it was the most guys we had out there at one time. Now you're looking at nine guys that aren't working their jobs either. Yeah. You know, so if you want to, I'm not a real financial whiz, but to me, if you go and start taking somebody's income away, that 25000 now becomes 30000 mm -hmm. for 18 and a half. I mean, that was 142 man hours to put that, to fight that. And we don't mind fighting fire when there's a problem, you know, because, but when it's, from our point of view, if it's become a more of a, I'm going to do what I want because I can issue, that's when it becomes tough for you to leave your job the next time. Right. Yeah, yeah of course. And that's exactly what people are going to continue to do unless they put a ban out there. You know, red flag warnings mean nothing to them. I mean, I think... Is this, is this something we can make a contingency ban? Because we don't want to put a ban on if it rains 10 inches in the next two weeks. Well, it, it's something as a chairman um, can relinquish, you know, and remove. Well, provided but, the motion's made that way. Per, yeah, mm -hmm. provided, provided that we empower them to do that, then I would feel comfortable. I'll make a motion to, to institute a burn ban until, until such time as the chairman feels that there's been sufficient rainfall to alleviate some of the worst of the red flag concerns with respect to burning. Okay, we have a motion. Well, before you make the motion, you have to understand, this includes campfires, barbecue grills. Yeah. Unless you word it specifically to eliminate open flame in some form or fashion. And I don't know what well, state, you know, you got to go back to state law now. So I'm not sure, I, it's been a while since I was knee deep in that. I mean, yeah, it, it, has it gotten to that point, do you think, that campfires, burning garbage in your burn barrel? <coughs> yeah, at yeah, this, this point right, right now, it is. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. I, I, I haven't burnt any garbage in yeah. a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I just don't, I don't get Yeah, it. the grass is green, but you've got duff underneath there that... Yeah, no, I stand by the brush and that's worth it. Okay. You can an open, open burning. So any open flames? Until, until the chairman, you know, sees fit to alleviate it due to the moisture or rainfall. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. And is there is there penalties with that under state law that we don't have to 
Yep. Come yes. up with, yeah. If, if they get Except called. every time Steve goes out there looking for this guy, all of a sudden the guy's standing next to a big bird. Oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know. And that's, yeah. How are you going to prove it, though? Yeah, right. exactly. And that's always the difficulty. The difficulty is in, in prosecuting, but I, I just think, knowing that there's a $1,500 yeah. fine for it may prevent somebody from. Well, and if, they hear, if they hear that on the radio, at least they know where things stand. People know what, what yeah. a ban means, right? There's no question. It's dry enough right now for somebody to be driving down the road, pitch a cigarette out absolutely, the and have a fire going yeah. Yeah. before they get yeah. piled down the road. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. that. I mean, it's it that could be a it could be a truck backfire. I mean, yeah, any it. anything right you now, it. it's pretty volatile. Yeah, it was what was it two springs ago when that that semi was driving north on 29, dragging a chain. Yeah, started fires for. Yeah. My yeah, I was next to the railroad track. I I wait. Yeah, just mm -hmm. waiting for a spark to come off somewhere. Yeah. It's all peaks. Just be careful because people, you know. Well, and that's and that's how we're looking. For. We're not don't you know, hang them, you know. Right, exactly. We're not looking, you know, for a fascist takeover and burning in Ramsey County. Right. We, we just want guys to really stop and think about what they're doing. Sit there for an hour and let the thing burn out. You know, make sure there's a tractor in the field that you're working in. Don't. Don't light one in every parcel you in uh, every parcel of land you have between Devil's Lake and the county line, and then. But that's certainly off. not what this ban would would incorporate. Exactly. No, 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 you know, no matter how close you monitor that, you're not allowed to do that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it, and really, right now the conditions the are conditions right are right for that. Right. I, I'm I'm of the opinion that it, that it's it's one thing to have a couple of farmers who are a little upset because they can't do on their land right. what they will, but I think it would be an, another thing entirely if you had 15 people's homes burned to the ground and had them sitting here. Right. Well, I mean that's part of the argument. Part of the argument I look at is simply that you have to have enough common sense to say that if I start something, it gets out of control. And it's costing the fire department the amount of money it's costing them. I'm not going to have a fire department here in a few years, possibly, to help me when I really need them because yeah. I almost paid me possibly. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and my opinion of, of the five mills that we collect is so that there's a haul of trucks in it. Yeah. yeah. You know, just because you're paying five mills doesn't it doesn't guarantee does, doesn't volunteers. give you the license to start throwing matches wherever no. you please either. Of course, you not. know, I mean. But it doesn't guarantee volunteers either, and volunteers are the lifeblood of the fire department. Yeah, if absolutely. we keep burning you guys out, not no pun intended, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not good for anybody. Well, the average lifespan of a volunteer's career right now is five years of fire service. So, it's tough. You know, we've got... To answer your question, Jeff, no. I'll second that motion. Okay. We have a motion and second to enable a burn ban uh, in Ramsey County uh, for the foreseeable future until the precipitation happens. And I'll talk with the volunteer fire department. Yeah, it's just not, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, Ramsey County, we cover most Ramsey County, but don't forget to contact Edmore and Stark. You yeah. know, I mean, there's other voices out there well, that, of course. that you should. Yeah. I just want to make sure that that's. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk to them on, hopefully it rains across the county on Thursday, and this is just yeah. a short term thing, but we'll have to keep track of it and see what happens. Yeah. And we can hope that Louise and Eric will get that out ASAP and. People will hear and see it in the paper on the radio. Okay. So. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other visitors or delegations? Everybody else here is good to go. Quick announcements. All right. <laughs> I need to get home. Dad's texting me, so I'm going to the <laughs> uh, the, only, the only thing I'll bring up is the, the Lake Region Library of the Board voted to uh, approve uh, the Reading Garden final design. Uh, the total cost of that project will be $90,000 to be raised through private donation, of which uh, $42,000 has been already spoken for, so it will be fundraising for about $50,000, so if you or anybody you know would like to make a donation to have an outdoor reading garden at the library, I think it's going to be a wonderful project. Thank you. We'll be adjourned. Oh, can I make one announcement? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 
I'm sure everybody knows, but I think the last meeting, the day after, is when we were having four Devils Lake meeting. We hired a new executive director. His name is Brad Barth. He will be on the job, I believe, June 1st this year. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I have to give my call. Yeah. Uh, uh, and background, he used to be the executive director for the uh, State College of Science Foundation. So he's got some, some good background. So we're really excited to have him on board. So. Other than that, no further announcements, so we'll do adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>